Hi, howdy, hello, everybody. It's me, the handsome lad, and welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number 70. You know what that means. Channel members, brand new world download out this very second. But spoilers, that world download is up to date as of everything that we've done up to this moment. Up to this moment, I've been AFKing in between episodes. Look, look, I'm a man of compromise. I will accept, hopefully, like, I don't know, one solid row of slime balls. After all, I AFKed, but... Not really for the longest time. I accidentally forgot that I was meant to AFK and exited the game. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yes, that's right. Also, at one point, aha, at one point I took a break, came down here and figured that these whole art situation, it should extend all the way back. So I went ahead and did that all the way around. But anyways, the moment of truth, all the way down here on the surface in the crypt, the slime crypt, one stack of slime, ple or one row. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, I understand, I formally understand, one is solid, a half, a half chest of slime, this farm is even better than I thought, <laughs> alright, well, I uh, didn't really think to incorporate a crafting table into the design, so I suppose for now, right there will do, why don't we convert all of these slime blocks back into slime balls and slime blocks, you know what I'm saying, let's go ahead and convert it all and get back, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy how that worked out. Oh, that's insane. Anyways, let's get back home, sweet home. Whew, sweet, beautiful slime farm. You are beautiful. <laughs> I'll be back on that. Oh, we travel back home, sweet home. Hi, how you doing? Are you prepared for today's big clay farming extravaganza? Because, oh boy, I hope you are. By the end of today's episode, we're going to have built ourselves an automatic machine so I will never run out of clay again. It's quite beautiful. Whew, back over home, sweet home. Let's go ahead and put this spot right there as a sweet slime spot forever. I'm sorry, potions. You gotta move. All right, so hear me out. I have a little bit of an idea. In the last episode, we started a new tradition called the question of the day. Today's question of the day, what is your favorite block combination of all time? So out there in the world, there are builders. And then <laughs> there are builder builders. I may or may not have been watching Hermitcraft lately and might or might not be insanely inspired by this beautiful block combo right here. You see, in Minecraft, I feel like I've seen for years, ever since the moss block was added to the game, people building walls with this beautiful moss block and like plain old mossy cobblestone and it turns out so nice looking. I feel like for today's clay farm, this might actually be exactly the vibe. All that I need to do is find a location and <laughs> right behind that wall, the perfect location. Oh, that's crazy how that worked out. Sheep, no offense, but genuinely, you are so despicable, the bane of my existence. How are you always in the way every project I want to do? And you too, bro, door. I had to move them both again right off the bat. And the cherry trees too, taunting me, dropping beautiful petals everywhere. I'm so sorry. I feel so sad about this, but no, you have to go away. And unfortunately, tragically, the cursed one right here cut clean in half by the resetting of chunks. You gotta go away too. And uh, I'm a monster. Hey, right. science experiment. A black sheep, a blue sheep. If you make sweet to baby, does that make a dark blue? No, it should, though. It definitely should. Hello, door, bro, man. I don't even want to hear from you, dude. Get in the boat. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And just like that, home sweet home sweet world door, you're back again. Enjoy. This is a nice and safest version of your shack yet. I am so nice. Now, before we can do anything else, it's time for a little bit of terraforming. Let's do this. A little bit of time later in this marvelous tree, oh my god, it grew, and I think that's a keeper alrighty. I wanted to have two big, oh, it gets even better. I wanted to have two big trees right next to this building. Maybe, like, a couple more as well. I guess we'll have to, like, wait and see, but, oh, yeah, I like the branches, the shaping is chaotic, and it's cool. Meanwhile, the build site over here for today's clay farm, oh, it's coming along. What do you think about a shape like this? 
what I did here is I did a dark oak pillar. I think what I want to do is maybe strip it. It'll look really, really good with the moss. I think that'll be cool. But then I have these pillars spaced out five blocks. On this side, don't need it to be as deep for the farm. What I want to do, so maybe they're like three blocks, something like that. Over on this side, I was imagining these tall, looming, deep slate pillars stretching all the way into the sky. Maybe tallest build in this, well, not tallest build in this section. That's, it's not going to be a monster, all right? But big, deep slate pillars, it'll be beautiful. All right, so now, the moment that I'm a little bit nervous for, I can't lie, the moment of truth. This block combination right here, I've never done it before. I figured it's probably similar to all of the other ones. Like, you just go ahead and drop the blocks down in a, a little bit of a random fashion. Try and make it look like completely natural, and the green tones will just work for themselves. will blend in. Really hoping this factory right here doesn't blend too much in with the ground, now that I think about it. But hey, you know, no big deal. We'll figure it out as we go. Oh, also, how could I forget? How could I forget? I almost didn't even say that I want to have a porch on this build. I think I want to, like, step up and step into the build. Something like that. That'll be cool. And then maybe front door right there. Whew. So far, so good. I think we've got it, lads. So part of the thing that I kind of wanted to mention here in today's episode, because after all, it is the Minecraft guide and and all is block combinations if you're trying out a new block combination and it doesn't work the first time do not give up if you just kind of like give up and revert back to your original classic like oak wood special whatever you want to call it i mean you're never going to grow as a builder i mean of course there is that one-off instance where like you create a monstrosity and you look you got no choice but to tear it down but i feel like probably 90 percent of the time depending on the blocks you're you're picking i guess but hey, anyways a lot of the time you could usually make almost every block combination work you just gotta figure out how to balance it right all right so that goes right there maybe that goes there maybe there too maybe on the other side we flip it and that goes there that goes there this goes here that goes right there and then finally boom that goes right there so far so good i need to finish up the first floor with like maybe stripping the logs a little bit we'll get the towers in a little bit later but next up i have a brilliant idea at least i, I hope it's gonna be brilliant what i want to do is i want to take these logs and run them long ways maybe something like that now that I think about it, I could actually, because I'm going to cover them up, oh, hold on, hold on, I'll make it cheaper. I'll just go ahead and do this stuff on the inside right here, repeat that. We're never going to see it anyways, other than from the inside. Then on the front of the build, what I wanted to do or try out is maybe like some staircases going long ways, kind of hanging off the build. Maybe right here to differentiate it, make it look a little bit more interesting. We do logs, turn them out, and of course, all of this stuff, it ends up being stripped. It'll look pretty cool. Then over here on this other side, we continue the whole pattern. We run the staircases straight into the tower. I think that'll look smooth and cool. The side note, it's so cool that you can actually just use the moss block to make a mossy cobblestone. It's not my preferred way. That's why I made temporary vine farm right over there. But it is so cool that the devs thought about it like that and were like, hey, yeah, yeah. Logically, that would make sense. You can do it. Why not? Now, on this short side, it might be a little bit more tricky, but oh, wait, no, it's not. I think what I do is I just do the same thing. I just take this and turn it around, and I'll do it on the backside, in between these two factories as well. Now, on the underside of the build, the dear Bonzo pointed out that, oh, it's it's looking a tad bit flat, don't you think? Can't lie, it was a little bit hard to hear coming from my best friend. However, the solution, I've got it. Vents gates hanging down like that. You open them up, connect them to the fences, and oh, it's interesting. And well, it's flat. To make it even more cool on the side, maybe we do like a staircase and pop things down. And then just like that, we've created a flat wall that is actually not so flat after all. <laughs> I think that looks so cool so far. I'm excited. Couple more blocks placed down later and we're at a turning point in our build. So on the inside of our storage building, I have a little bit of a growing operation. Uh -huh, a little bit of a grow op going on in here, except it's growing very, very slowly. You see, for this next part of the build, I needed myself a little bit of green dye. And I don't think I have any green dye anywhere. Never really stocked up on this stuff. So I, I guess in the meantime, I could work on the towers or something. So on the towers, I wanted them to be dark, strong, a little bit evil looking. I wanted to use deep slate. I barely used any deep slate, I feel like, in like the most recent episodes. So it's time to switch it up, baby. This stuff is my good luck charm. What I want to do is have deep slate bricks maybe going up a little bit with cobbled deep slate. That'll be like the main part of the tower. Maybe in the middle to add a little bit of detail, we put some spicy walls. That'll be cool. And then same thing on the other side. Then the same thing on the other side. And then the same thing on the other side. There's no redstone exposed. I fully 
build that in when I did that other factory. Of course, you know me. I would never. Yep, anyways, building a tower. Alright, so I haven't finished the build quite yet. It's still a little bit more work to do, but there's a big supply that we're going to need if we want to pull off this farm and pull off this farm right. How in the world do I get down? Maybe, no, whoops, accidentally. <laughs> That's exactly how I get down. Dripstone. Alright, so for this farm today, we're going to need ourselves quite a bit of pointed dripstone and quite a bit of normal, plain old dripstone blocks as well. I figured, excuse me, I figured what I would do is walk down in here and have a nice time, a calm time. Where are you all coming from? Leave me alone. I figured I would make my way down into this big perilous ravine and have a nice time over here in the dripstone flats. Look, you don't scare me. I've got the higher ground now. You try and find me, skeleton. I don't care about you. <laughs> I'm the boss. So for this build, we're going to need quite a bit of dripstone and actually quite a decent amount to point to dripstone too. I figured I'd just come to this biome and tear it down, but I also at the same time feel terrible about tearing this place down. It's, uh, it's so beautiful looking, but for profit, I have to. But look at me. For profit, I have to. Yet again. Maybe I can just tear this biome down in a way that isn't like too obstructive. Like I could take it low key out of the sides of this biome, right? Then then you would never know that a lad came down here and tore this biome up, right? Between us, you would never know. Right. The grow operation, how are we doing today? Ugh, man, why is this stuff so slow? Cactus, you failure. I'll farm you to the end of time, I swear you're doing. Please, just grow. I need a little bit of dye. Ugh. Well, whatever, because of the build. The build so far is progressing. Look at those strong, sturdy, deep laid towers. They look really nice. So I've been busy. I hunkered down and got the building, brainstorming, and a little bit more building. Now these towers, what I figured, the final thing to cap it all off, a window would be nice. But I think maybe matching the vibe a little bit more, making it more intense is this black stone wall that's so cool looking. Over here, I haven't done too much, but I did actually fill in a couple temporary blocks up top there. You see, I had to get the measurement of the tower right, and I wanted to actually throw in the roof as well. The roof, it's really not much. It's simple, but I mean, I don't know. I think it's nice. That's fine. It works. Now, when it comes to our awesome towers here, I wanted to do something a little bit more fun and have them be different heights. So this tower is a little bit taller than that one. On to the towers, I'm going to come back in right at the end of the build today and put something cool on the top too. Flipping around over to the inside of the build today here, it's time we get a little bit more technical. First things first, we need a beautiful floor. This is a factory, which by the way, I completely forgot to tell you guys. I don't know how I did it. I was too excited about the build or something, but I want to create a factory zone. That's the sole reason I'm placing a factory dead across the road from like the beautiful cathedral. You see, we got factory number one over there, or maybe even villager breeder is factory number one. Then we got the moss farm. And then we wrap everything up with this thing over here, at least for now, which is another beautiful factory as well. So I figure what we do in here is the only way to do a factory, and that's going to be the smooth stone floor. We'll walk things all the way over to this spot right here, and then what I want to do to get to the next story, and then the next, next story, three stories in this, buddy. I feel like realistically the only way, and probably the coolest way to get up to the next story has got to be a spiral staircase. So how about we go ahead and spiral this staircase all the way up to, say, maybe like this spot right here. This will be floor number two. Then we can go ahead and do it one more time. I think there's going to be room. I checked my measurements. We go ahead and spiral it one final section. So I got a little rule, a little tip or trick, if you will. When it comes to farming clay, you want to do the bigger, the better here. Farming clay is, it's time dependent. It can take a little bit of time. Farming cactus, which is insanely, insanely annoying, is also time dependent. Apparently, it can take a lot of bit of time. All right. Another thing we're going to need to have lined up for us today, the clay farm, is dripstone block. After we get that clean floor in, and then another clean floor in, and then another clean floor in, it's time for us to start creating floors, or basically like pads with this dripstone block. Now, there's a balance to things, though. I'm trying to create an easy-to-use clay farm, which means I'm not going to create like a thing of like eight or more blocks. I'm going to keep it relatively shallow here at four blocks depth. 
Then after that right in front of this thing, I've got a slot for water and almost like a, well, almost like it's a slot for water. I'm going to go ahead and grab water buckets and start filling in this water trench all the way. We're going to take it from one side of the building all the way to the other side of the building. That'll make it nice and easy for us to refill water. But wait, there's more. To make this design even more ingenious, I've come up with an even better solution. We've got water up at the front for the dirt that is like right near us, really close. But what about the dirt all the way at the back? Well, my friend, for that one, we can go ahead and modify this wall just a little bit. So I suppose first things first, over here on the tower, I'll solid that up so water doesn't spill anywhere. After that, with the help of this handy little stone cutter, we'll make a ton of staircases and swing to the outside of the build. Now over here on the outside of the build, to preserve the aesthetics of the interior of the build, I'm going to place some staircases facing backwards above where I'm going to eventually put dirt. Now you're smart. I don't even have to show you. You just know how it works. You know that if I dumped water in the staircase, it would pour out unless I have a trap door right there behind the staircase. I think dark oak trap doors will look absolutely fine. It'll pass. Let's say, okay, imagine with a higher up part of the build. We'll do a stripe right there. We'll flip them closed. And then actually, great news, because this is the back of the build, I never even see it anyways. I guess if I walk over here, I see it a little bit, but it's not that bad looking. It's fine. It looks like a stripe. Over here on the inside of the build, I'm going to take a water bucket and waterlog every single one of these staircases on the back wall because I have trap doors right behind it. And then in the case of that corner, I've got like proper solid blocks behind it. The water's not going to go anywhere. With all of that wonderful progress made downstairs, it's time to go upstairs and do it all again. We start with the floor of dripstone. I take the wall out. I realize the fence gates are going to maybe cause some problems. Uh, oh, no. You know what? No, no, it won't. I take it back. We'll just go ahead and make some modifications to the build. This is the back of the build, after all. We don't need the fence gates. We just go ahead and put trap doors. No big deal. So we've got the water. Check. We've got the dripstone blocks. Check. That's a nice added bonus. We've got a decently detailed interior. Bonus check. The final two ingredients that we're going to need is a little bit of pointed dripstone and a tiny bit of mud. For the pointed dripstone, it goes on every single bottom of every single dripstone block of every single floor. And on every single floor, wait till you see what I've done. On every single floor, I've already done it. I've got pointed drifts on floor number two. Floor number three doesn't have a pad above it, so I don't have to do it. Meanwhile, all the way down low in the basement, this is going to be a little bit hard to see. I put solid blocks for the water sources, but yeah, yeah, I got pointed drifts on down here as well. All of that means, lack of green dye aside, our farm is just about finished. Now, of course, of course, we're going to use the farm in today's episode. I'll show you how it works in a minute. But first things first, I had a little bit of an idea, a vision. What if I put a balcony on this build? The balcony could sit right here, right in between this, like, tall tower and this area by the balcony. I could flip some trap doors up like that. On the inside, I have a staircase. And then kind of be able to walk out here. Maybe this is, like, a super quick way out of the build. Or at the least, just, like, a cool, like, little design trick. I can't believe it. I'm so sad. It's taken so long today. When it comes to green dye, I wanted to have so much of it. I have 11. You see, using some gravel, a tiny bit of sand, and definitely some terracotta. I've got a cool idea. You see, it'll be a little bit tricky to get the full vision in with such small amounts. I'm gonna have to do some waiting around, but, but I was thinking, on the lower part of the build, we've got a lot of green. How about on the upper part of the build, we basically carry that same idea all the way out. I was thinking, if I'm ever able to get enough green dye to finish this whole thing off, like a green top like that, add a couple of details on it, and whew, we'll be cooking. We'll be cooking for sure. And so, for one final time, friends, I'll be right back. And I'm back. <laughs> Did you miss me? <laughs> okay, so it's time for today's comment of the day. Today's comment of the day comes from a decent handful of episodes ago, but I completely forgot. The comment was on the whole, like, wood adventure episode when we went out into the world and farmed it. And how could I forget that bamboo is one of the best wood types for, like, doing anything where you just need any type of wood because you can of course automatically farm it i talked all about it in the bamboo episode but then also like you can chop down a whole bamboo jungle and get tons of it so quickly if i could add it back onto that episode it's already out uh, i would but if you ever need a large amount of wood for anything and a green wood type actually don't sleep on bamboo it's great 
You know what I say, your build is never truly finished. The masterpiece isn't complete until you decorate and make that buddy blend into the environment around it. You gotta do the terraforming, all of the work, all of the plants, and make that build come to life. Today, I've done, well, I've done a little bit. I got some sweet berry bushes over from where the villagers live and kind of sprinkled them around the build. I was also thinking maybe right next to that bush that just grew, like right in this area, a big, giant, beautiful oak tree, and maybe if I can fit a cherry blossom in there too, that could be kind of cool. I kind of came up with a little bit of an idea, though, a way to kind of cut off this whole uglier, did no offense, but a little bit uglier zone of the world. What if I did a section? What is that? Four blocks right there. Then I can go ahead and go down and do the same thing four blocks right there and basically just build a small wall and block it all off. I figured maybe this would be like a nice way to kind of close off that mining zone, which I do really, really like, but I also don't like the idea of the mining zone vibe creeping into this vibe. This is meant to be completely separate. So what if I say maybe came in here with the wall, make some small adjustments to it, make sure it looks beautiful. I'll get a tree in this area, maybe like right in there after I get the thumbnail for the episode, and oh, I think it'll look kind of beautiful. Wait, wait, wait a second, I keep coming up with more ideas. What if I do that to blend it in a little bit more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe right on top of those spots right there to almost make it look a little bit more fancy, just like that, boom, that's the final wall product for the day. You see the clock tower, you see it all, but you don't see the dirty mining zone. Oh, it's beautiful. Anyways, laddies, I think I've got a farm to show you. So check this out. We walk into the farm, we pick up the water, just like that from right there on the floor, or alternatively, I'm fancy, I pick it up from the invisible spots in the wall. Now this is gonna be all about speed here. To kick off our clay run, we start by placing a bunch of dirt in. We fill it in all the way, all over the dripstone. Then what I was hoping I could do, and I don't know if I'll be able to talk and do it very quick, but basically, just like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the movement, it's minimal. Oh, it's smooth. He's quick and whoa, whoa, before he can even finish it. The clay is already starting to form. This is way quicker than I last remembered. Oh, it's beautiful. Then for the ones up front, I can just do this little flick of the wrist just like this and make a ton of mud really, really quick. I guess, you know what? Maybe this is almost like a mud farm too. It's a, a true two in one. Anyways, though, after I finish everything, and if I wasn't talking at the same time, I might be able to pull it off a little bit quicker. But anyways, after I finish all of that, then I would wait. Alternatively, I would swing up to the second story and queue it all up and do it all again. Let's do this. So obviously here, the double up on the water sources hidden in the wall, but also right in front of you, it's not necessarily necessary, but I feel like, and uh, definitely finding out right now, I've made a little bit of mud or two in my life. This method with the water hidden tucked away in the wall is way quicker, definitely, absolutely, than if I had water like just at the front and had to like grab it and look all the way to the back, grab it. And there's minimal movement here with my little design and look, it's perfection. From this point on in my life, there will never be a day again where I want to say fill up this floor with a couple pots, but I don't have any clay. All I need to do is swing over here, spend a tiny bit of time, and make some clay for myself. So let's check this out. The first floor. By the time I went all the way up and almost finished the top floor up there, this thing is nearly fully converted. I would say maybe like halfway. Meanwhile, the second floor, it's all random. Maybe like a third of the way or something. And then the top floor where I just was, it's not doing bad. Now check this out, right here at the end I want to show you a little misconception when it comes to clay. I had this misconception for the longest time. If I harvest a clay block with my hand, every single time I'm going to get four pieces of clay. If I harvest it with a fortune three shovel, every single time, no matter what, I'm going to get four pieces of clay. Fortune, unfortunately, tragically, <laughs> it does not affect clay. Anyways, Clay Farm at the Mossy Moss Build, what do you think? Tell me all about it down below and what would you like to see next? channel members there's a brand new world download out with this beautiful build and everything else that we built recently for more info tap that join button and for the download slide over to the community tab thank you all so much for watching this episode i hope you enjoyed it until next time it's been me the marvelous clay farming a mud making man goodbye everybody i'll see you tomorrow